a meet for everyone. Uh, thank you for the wait. Um, today we'll continue with the last part of uh, section 13. Uh, we will begin with the uh, last part of uh, section 30, as I mentioned, and then we'll jump into the new chapter. Very close to the end now. Um, hopefully at this stage we um, have an idea about what this whole book is talking about. Um, it might be very um, reading from literal sense. It might be very um how to say very uh archaic sometimes it might feel obscure but the message can never um the message is um permanent it's always there it's uh, applicable anytime anywhere no matter where you are um it's all about be conscious of the consequences and there are so many actions hence many consequences so without further ado, we begin by chanting 10 times Ami Tofo, and then we'll go straight into the section 13. Uh, I mean, section 3, part 13. Ami Tofo. Ami Tofo. Ami Tofo. Ami Tofo. Ami Tofo. Ami Tofo. A mi to fo a mi to fo a mi to fo a mi to fo to be guilty of evil and be so impious as to then demand the spirit and or God to bear witness to one's innocence. Basically it's like swearing in behalf of someone, you know, noble, someone powerful or someone respected so that you can justify your wrongdoing. That's what it trying to say. It's justifying something that is not right by using the name of sages or people who are well respected, uh, who have good um, reputation and good deeds. Uh, so if you define God in the sense of, uh, you know, the, the qualities of it as people who are in Chinese, right, we call it people who are smart, who are righteous, who are you know, um, heart is straight. Uh, they are very smart, very wise. They are called gods in, in that sense, right? And it can apply in other cultures as well, as long as it's representing good qualities, you know, something noble, something holy. Um, so using these people that represent all that is good in this world to justify our evil doing or justify one's um, wrongdoing, is basically a contradiction, right? It's a joke in a sense. So um, that's because our attitude towards these people who has done huge contribution or who has been a role model or who has been a symbol of all that is good in this world, you know, that makes us, um, that relieves us from the suffering, that makes us, you know, have faith despite all the difficulties, despite all the calamities, calamities no matter what it is right it can be god it can be buddha it can be whatever you think that is good in this world and they have you know shown by their examples you know through you know their chronicles you know how they help people whether it's 100 percent fact or not as long as it can invoke a sense of you know humility sense of honor sense of noble nobility sense of kindness that's what it means right so Using their name and do something that is entirely against what they taught is an ultimate disrespect. Ultimate, um, how do I say? Literally, you smearing um, feces on their face. This is this is uh, this is like um, how do I say? Dishonoring their legacies. Um, it can be in the name of God, and you do all that terrible things. In the name of Buddha, you do all that terrible things, right? Uh, stealing, killing, sexual misconduct, etc., etc. Cover up under false pretense, false names, invade other countries, etc., etc., etc. So this is what it means here, right? Using your so-called pious zeal zealousness as a pretense to invade for your own personal gain or to invade and encroach on other other people's territory, personal property, or cause harm, cause um, body harm, mental harm, physical harm, etc. So that you can get what you want. So that is uh, what this 
sentence trying to say. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, there's no, you know, lack of examples in the history. Uh, even now. <clears throat> so how do we follow? So how should we proceed instead? You know, how do we actually follow the sage's teaching? You know, the teaching of uh, people who has, um, you know, has best intention to this world. We should f first learn how to interact with each other as a people. Uh, how do we deal with things? We deal with matters. Um, this is a, a lot of, um, it takes experience and learning. And, and I mean, you need to experience, you need to get, um, you know, observant. Something I, um, so I think I'm still learning very hard. You know, the words we might say, the, the things we do, um, you know, the our, our, our gestures, stuff like that. Those are um, how we interact with people. And uh, to learn how to interact with people is to create a more harmonious world or society in the very least relationship in between you and others. Uh, going against that, you know, trying to cause conflict, trying to, you know, um, rile up, you know, the more unwholesome side of other people by doing the same thing, you know, rile up their angers, rile up their greed, their, their lust. This is against our better nature, our better self. Uh, and it's indulgent into it and hence causing sufferings in return. All right. So if you follow your good nature, you know, your, we call it Buddha nature, we call it God's nature, we call it, you know, um, our true heart, our kind heart, our conscience, uh, what we get is merits. If we go against our conscience, right, everything we do is just to gain, to do your own gain, to achieve your own gain, just purely your own gain, so that you suffer at the others, I mean, you enjoy at the others' expense, then calamities will fall upon you. That's natural. People will rise up against you, rebel you, if you're powerful, one day when you lost it, they will backstab you and stuff like that in the end because you did the same to others. All right. Now, um, remember what um, what we learn about karma. It has time element in it. It does not happen immediately. Not all karma happens immediately, manifests immediately. You plant the seeds, you pour the water, you put in love and you put in effort. All right. Even then, you might not sprout. If the condition is not enough or the seeds itself has, does not have enough life energy to push out so all it takes is you know patience you need to just plant it and and let it sprout on its own whatever it is um do not get false uh, do not get fooled by what happens in um, this appearance in the surface uh what actually what has yet to come we never know but what we know is if you have done you know bad deeds or harm people you will get harm it's just a matter of time it will come at the time when you're unprepared right maybe next life maybe this life maybe you're too you have too much marriage in the past they can touch you next life they will touch you so does doing the good deeds right if you continue um cultivate good deeds you get better and better and better you know everything go according to your wishes people you see people you do will go according to your wishes so this is something we should understand by now. This is the basic um, teaching of karma. And it does not leave that, no matter how far we go in this book. So uh, power of karma is very strong. You know, this life, you can get it. You can manifest, but you need to really dedicate your effort into it. So it's not just sitting there passively doing it. Actually, you know, understand your deeds, your behaviors, and actually change it actively. And understand this is your habit this is hard to change yet you persist yet you go against your habits so that you can mold a better version of yourself all right we understand that we are all con result of you know conditions we are a result of you know parents much to get um go get together and then get us a body right and then we are consciousness you know our consciousness rest within this body and then we, in, in, we, 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 we act, we, we, how we operate as human, you know, mechanically, biologically, mentally, 
you know, socially, right, and as well as spiritually. Those are conditions. They are all conditions. Um, and since it's bound by condition, we can change it because conditions can be changed. It's condition. When condition change, results will nudge towards whatever is the strongest, right? It's like um, a plant with closer uh, seeds in the soil that has a um, closer to the source of water, right? It will, the roots will grow towards water, right? Hydrophilic. The seeds that has, um, how's it, closer to the sunlight, it will sprout closer to, towards the sunlight. It's, it's drawn towards whatever is the strongest, you know, water or sunlight. So say if the water source is closer to the seeds, the seeds will, the, the, the roots of the seeds will go towards water, uh, more towards water. If the sunlight has a stronger element than the, than the water, then it will go closer towards the sunlight, something like that. Um, so does our karma. You know, whatever you did the most, most intense, most sincere, most um, repetition as well, you do a lot, you know, of that one thing. Eventually, you mold yourself into that person, you know, and that's where we need to take time and effort to dig out what do we need to work on, what's good, what's not good, and how do we change it. There's a whole point of having someone like God, someone like spirits, someone like, you know, sages, especially in Chinese, we have a lot of sages, someone like, you know, like in modern days, heroes, those people that sacrifice themselves or risk their own safety to help others. Those are model. We're role modeling towards that. That's the best I can think of social um, education, you know, rather than forcing you, in, indoctrinating you, give you that idea and, and punch it into your face. Uh, in your mind, you, you you learn from the example, you learn from this story. It's slower, but it's more natural, it's more organic. That's how you learn from your parents. Your way of speaking, your way of thinking, more or less is influenced by others. And of course, you have your own element as well that you bought with your self. And then you also interact with other people and it becomes a unique products, right? Uh, so that's why we have these people, uh, sages, their story, their feats in history as our reference point. Um, Liao Fan, right? We all learn Liao Fan. We heard of Liao Fan. Um, even even if, if we haven't, it's called Changing Destiny. We recommend to have a look online. Uh, it's available for free. So what it's all about is about Mr. Liao Fan met a person called Yun Gu Chan, uh, Mr. Yuan. Uh, she met someone who can calculate you know, the oracles, predict what's going to happen to him. And he met someone who is actually genuinely skilled at this, reading the oracles and hence calculate, predicted his pathways in life, how long he's going to live, 53, what kind of um, situation he's going to have in his career, he's going to reach this level. And his children, his son, you know, he's not going to have a son. In, and his life is quite normal, to be honest. Um, so he wants to change it, condition, yet again, condition. So he met Yun Gu, Master Yun Gu, a Zen master. He changed his life because he listened and he actually wants to change. So it works together because his life is not smooth. His life was so boring, so stagnant. Everything is exactly as predicted by the Oracle Master. So this Oracle Master has already calculate written in a, in a, like a timetable schedule kind of thing. What year you're going to get, what kind of salary, level of salary you're going to gain at that kind of year, the rank, the salary. So it, it becomes something um, so uh, routine. He's like, there's no need to think about it. My life is fixed. What's the point to put an effort? I don't even need to put effort. I get to that level as predicted. Until he met Yung -Gu, Master Yungu and said, you can change this, you know, this whole thing, you know, of course you want something more, you want more dynamic relationship with your life. Um, what difference shades between him and the rest of us or the most of us is we might, we don't know about this, we thought we change because um, actually no, some people actually change their life without knowing the mechanism. They actually put in the effort and they actually, you know, act from their heart and actually do something great 
without thinking about it you know like risking themselves save people life or uh, you know um, sacrificing his benefit in order to help more people they just do it and they unknowingly change their own life that's one way the other way is like this you learn about Alpha and you, you model after it right and then you understand okay this is my life my life might be a lot of fun I might not met someone who can calculate exactly to the minute detail of my life but I still can I mean I, I, I'm still sure that my life has a certain pathway you know, at this point you do this you do that you achieve that you reach this thing that's a milestone etc 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 so what are we going to do about it right it's not something we can just sit here and talk about but we can make clear about what's behind this and put an effort to do it uh, Leo Fan example is he has a lot of wandering thoughts for example what is wandering thoughts lust you know after a woman other woman even though he's married he, all this what we call normal instinct and stuff like that he's working towards purifying it right in an organic way by not sitting on electric chair and ex ex uh, electrocute himself or something like that nothing in nothing mechanical or inorganic right what we taught nowadays is inorganic so what's organic he changed his behavior by modeling after the people who made it he followed the examples and then he start counting his own deeds right uh, he slept very late he harmed his body that way because he drank a lot of alcohol as well you know substance abuse stuff like that um, all this bad habit life habit it works it affects your life it affects your moods it affects your behavior so they changed it right he slept on time he wake up report himself of his doing to the heavenly emperor you know the Chinese we always have a belief of a heavenly emperor watching over us judging our good and bad by our deeds you know I put, that's the same in every culture as well so all it does is to remind us um, is to remind himself every single day do not make mistakes twice right make it once you don't know okay now you know first thing you recognize is wrong second thing is you work on righting the wrong or reduce the harm you have done and then avoid it so this needs to be very deliberate you need to put your energy to focus on your action and deeds right no longer living like an aimless headless chook running around without knowing where to go before that he was like that even predicted everything was calculated right even we haven't been uh, calculated we haven't met someone who can calculate our life we still follow the pattern of our habits isn't it and our habits is you know when you're angry you're angry when you're sad you're sad when you obsess over something you obsess over something right over game over relationship over stuff over uh, people's words over people's behaviors uh, you're overthinking you're over obsessing or you over um, react or over indulge everything that is over right will represent from your behavior and you will know somehow when you quiet down you will realize okay I might be over or I might say something too much or I might be um to um, what is it, over the top stuff like that so those things when you interact you will realize oh okay this is this is something we need to change um, because the result is harm you actually harm people of course there are cases where you use that as a me method to you know bring the message across properly but you know for now we do not um, use our own standard 100% because our standard is based on habits and our habits right does it lead us to success in terms of cultivation in terms of a better version of myself does it bring results right if it doesn't bring results it can continue to cause miseries then our method is not right our behavior our thought our motus operandi our way we op operate is not uh, how to say 100% we gotta have to acknowledge that we can't be that arrogant right even though we talk about individualities and stuff like that there's something we gotta have to change as well otherwise um, like look at our life is our life going upwards 
is our behavior causing other people um, to change for better? It's, it, are we showing them a, a, a path, a person who, a path that helps them in their life, that actually you know improves their, their, their life as well, their relationship with their family, their work. Those things are, um, you know, those things are, you can see, you know, in front of your face, evidence, right? It's not in the air, you know, floating, calculating, oracle, stuff like that. It's actually everyday stuff. This thing, you pick it up, you realize you're getting better, you're getting more open, you're getting more, how to say, less worried. So that means you're doing something right. You're not causing harm to other people. You know, things you do, you do it well. And then you spend so less effort to do it well. That means you're doing it right. Like Master Ching Kong say, every year have your wandering thoughts, have your affliction reduced. Have we reduced our affliction every year? Is it, are we less worrisome? Are we less prone to worry? Are we less obsessive? Are we less indulgent? Are we more able to in tune with our intuition, our Buddha nature, our, 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 our core, you know, our heart? Uh, am I able to put my mind to good use? It's a tool. Leave it on its own device, it overthinks. Right? It's either you drive the tool or the tool drives you. Right? Nowadays, it's the tool drives us a lot more than we drive the tool. Why? Because everything we see, everything we eat, everything we touch, everything we say, everything we um, taste, you know, the five senses and the thoughts, right? It goes through the brain, right? And the mind, right, if you don't direct it, it will go on its own auto mode, autopilot. It will start thinking something out of nothing. Wu Zhong Sen Yo. It will create stories, perceptions, shaping realities. It might sound imaginative and awesome, but if you don't drive it to something meaningful or something helpful, it will go towards its own destruction. It keeps creating a false ego, false sense of self, webbing, webs and webs and webs of stories. So you driving the tool or the tool driving you, that's very important, all right? Uh, Mr. Liao Fan allows himself to, well, he takes quite a long time to drive himself back to the path he wants, right? First, he wants to get very good career outcome. He b literally becomes someone like in CEO level, right? Uh, back then, it was like directly ruling a top, most, um, uh, um, most, wealthy state in the China directly under the emperor's supervision so he's working as a mayor in there that means he must be very capable to rule something to to manage somewhere where it's more decadent and more wealthy so he has merits and all that uh, and so now we understand if we shape ourselves towards the goal towards the person towards that person we want ourselves to be right eventually you attract the things that is befitting that person right so that's why we look at saint sages like buddha right we buddhist buddha what he attracts is all the sages and bodhisattvas going to him even the ancestor befalls him he remains calm he remains untouched and move right uh yes he has done a lot more and he's done so much ahead of us it does not negate effect. It's all because of cause and effect. He accumulated himself time or step by step without um, allowing himself swayed. While he swayed back in, in the very beginning, he must have been through a lot to get to where he is now. So that, so so are we, right? So it gives us encouragement, um, you know, the motivation to, to keep going. Uh, <clears throat> that's why we talk about Sutras talk about this, right? Because it tells us what are we, what we are doing. Uh, it tells us um, the cause and benefit, basically. Be high. Tells us, you know, how do we get about our day, and what's the effect if we continue be fooled by the um, uh, by 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 the illusions, right? Unable to awake ourselves. Um, all right. Mm 
move on to another chapter. All right, so we're here talking about new new part, cruel and petty. So this is a new sh section. I'm just moving straight into it. Why is it cruel and petty? We'll see it when we read the um, sentences. Um, to regret after having given to charity, to borrow without intention to return or repay. So pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, what it means, we didn't give out of our heart. We just give because hey, to save face. Other people give as well. You know, John is giving as well. Uh, Andrew is giving as well. So I have to give because, you know, I might look stingy if I don't. So you want, you want to do it for the optics, for the people's eye, not actually out of your heart. Actually want to help them. That's what it means. Of course, cause and effect does not disappoint. You always get benefits. You always get what you sow. You reap what you sow. But the level, the intensity, the difficulties is higher than those people who do it out of their pure heart. Out of their pure heart, they will really want to help that person. They would, they would do their best to help that person. You know? And they don't just do it for the show. When people are looking at it, you do it. When people don't look at you, you don't do it. So that's a difference, right? That's why you can see someone earn money. They don't need to do anything. Sit at home, they earn like millions, millions. For some of us, like uh, we have to work every single day, OT, overtime and stuff like that just to get it. Some people can't even get three meals and a shelter. They have to move around place to place. So this have a variety of reasons we can't attribute to one, but what we can know is um, it has to be coming from how they give to others in the past. If they give others willingly, happily and really want to help them the intensity the stronger the intention is the easier the, the stronger the rep, uh, the repayment is so it comes back stronger multi multifold so you don't even need to do anything you suddenly got millions or don't have to do much effort some people give it reluctantly so when they get it when they you know reap what they saw it will take a longer time more process more effort just to get the same re reward or lesser reward um, so this just tell us when you give give 100 percent. doesn't matter they lie to you they cheat you or anything if you decided to give you give right uh, of course do some research beforehand and actually make sure it reaches the hand of people who need it right it can't harm it can't harm us but when we do it when we decide to do it do it in one go. Don't let don't let yourself having a sense of regret, um, because that will come and bite you in the back, in, in the end. All right. Um, yeah. So give give it easily. All right. Then you get money back easily. Of course, don't think about the repayment. If you think about repayment when you give, it will be hugely discounted. The reward will be hugely discounted because you're not giving it with the intention to help you're giving it because you want to get good karma knowing you will get good karma you won't need, even need to think about it so you just give borrow as well you borrow people always return and not just return what you borrow return in pristine condition or return at least in the same level of the condition that you borrow right when you borrow a book make sure it comes back properly if you borrow consumables you know toothpaste and stuff like that make sure you pay them back a brand new version right you don't take people's stuff and return them worse than it was unless it's consumables you replace it so the point is you need to make sure it's fair for other people and they're willing to trust you they're entrusting their own stuff to you make sure you fulfill that trust um, and you know it sounds, sounds simple but you know some sometimes we might forget about it sometimes we might take advantage of people because you know no one's gonna put you uh, accountable but cause and effect is the ultimate account accountability because what we face in day-to-day -day life is the result of our past action um there we go yeah like business 
why some people do the same thing as you are, but they're successful, but we are not. And then why some people have such a huge margin return, but we just barely break even, right? Same business, same method, same management sometimes. Yeah. Of course, management itself as well, you might have a good management, you know, people will come together and then you give them a peace and comfort, a place to work, to contribute. Then it's itself a merit. If you manage a place properly, then you will grow. So these things are conditioned to change. They are not fixed, not set in stone. Okay. So in conclusion, in your destiny, right, whatever you have, you will get it. Whatever you're not supposed to have, you won't get it, no matter how hard you try. Having said that, this is just a bottom line. It will it will change when you change your um, condition. And of course, the cost has got to be there, right? You plant the seeds, you're going to have to do a lot of work to get there. All right, you can't just say, oh, I have a seed of wealth, so I don't need to do anything, so I can, I can get wealth. You gotta at least go out and work and see how it goes. Or do a business or, you know, trying to um, contribute a bit, right? Um, even as a monk, right? We don't work, but they have to service to the community, go everywhere else around the world, talking Dharma, working on this project, you know, trying to like, our case in our society, we uh, in our associations, not just New South Wales, everywhere else under Master Chinggong's teaching, we're talking about reviving the Chinese culture, you know, introducing the um, values, you know, principles, philosophies of these uh, ancient sages in the Chinese diaspora to the world. You know, their examples, their success stories, proven, you know, is already there. You know, these um, famous people, uh, Confucius, all these like people in that era what did they do what did they maintain like what kind of uh you know maneuvers they have in order to achieve success uh, good story best i mean good example bad example you know they're all humans right no one's perfect so what did they do right what did they do wrong there's something i've looked closer into as well like emperors you know how did they build a, a, a company in our modern terms enterprise they they build an empire how do they start? What kind of people are they? How do they treat other people? Right? Like this one. Are they giving it without regrets? This one can apply into when you use people, when you use as in when you employ people's help. We have a principle in Chinese culture. If you doubt them, don't use them in service. Don't use their service. Don't enlist their service. If you, in, if you enlist their service, do not doubt them. Do not, do not tie their legs. Do not, how to say it? Um, do not pull their legs when you want to enlist their service. So do your due diligence, understand their intention. If it's aligned with your goal, then enlist their help. So this is our practical knowledge, right? You can use it in your day-to-day -day stuff. Um, yeah, so here we go. So those, are, those are things we can use in everyday life. Um, and if we understand it earlier, the more aware we are, the less... Uh, hurdles we'll encounter the easier it is for us to avoid this kind of pitfalls right like in youth time the easiest thing we can do is just sink into that bottomless hole of you know game and indulgence those things are not how to say 100% bad you can be relieving relieving stress and stuff like that right I can't just say no because I myself using that as well but when you find yourself not eating, not sleeping properly, get sucked into it day and night, day and night, night and day, and then you're, you know, you're stunted. Your your responsiveness is stunted. You're no longer more responsive to other people's needs and help, especially your loved ones, your family, your friends, your brothers, sisters, you know, your parents, your spouse, your partners, your boyfriend, girlfriend. You're getting stunted towards their needs, right? That means you already you know, lose yourself in, in, in this. And you can't, how to say, properly build a relationships and, you know, cater to each other's needs, cater to other people's, um, service other people, all right? And then that means that you're gonna be more and more isolated and you get more and more, uh, how to say, depressed, trapped, 
because you're not connected with other people. You're not observant. You're not low. You're not allowing yourself to to open up. You you're stuck in one mode of thinking, and then when actual life hits you, because it will, right? You still need to go through life, go out and work and stuff like that, and it hits you. Your ability to bounce back is harder, weaker. So those things need to be discovered earlier. You know, putting yourself in calculated risk, calculated dangers, and, and a bit of hardships always have a strengthen you in, in the very beginning. The earlier it is, the better you are and the stronger you are, the more resilient you are. So you no longer get, um, how to say, obsessed, say, over a relationship or over a, over a, a, a fallout of, of, you know, friendship, stuff like that. You easily bounce back and you go back to normal. So I digress a little bit, but um, yeah, back to this one. Uh, it's all about cultivating merits. Merits, the earlier, the better. And the way we cultivate merits, as pure as better, the purer the better. And this case is not pure. So go against it. You need to, um, the right example is, I mean, the, the, the example that actually is good to follow is, you know, pure intention. Do it, do it 100%. Don't go halfway, don't go 75, 100%, right? Whatever comes, comes, and you deal with it accordingly. Uh, but at, in the end of the day, your intention is to help. There's also, an, also another element of Mr. Liao Fan talking about, um, you know, like kindness, right? Does not necessarily mean you're always smiling and always, uh, you know, being respectful and all that. Those are out of out of your heart. You know, you respect people, your behavior should be naturally like that. If you add and acting on top of it, it becomes too fake, right? Sometimes you scold people for their own good. You like you like a mother towards the children, right? They're trying to wake them up. They edu- agitated. They are not waking up. They're still drilling. They're still stuck in that, whatever they are stuck in, right? Games and stuff like that. They are unable to manage themselves. So they're trying to get, get their wake up call, right? Um, so what appears unkind, if it's out of kind behaviors, it will help. And if you read history, Chinese history at the very least. There's a lot of people they might not doing a good deeds, right? They might kill and stuff like that. In the end of the day, they build a country that is more stable, right? Because they achieve the goals. So this is a mean, you know, the, the mean things or the goal thing, you know, the the, the goal justify the means, stuff like that. Um, those I'm not going to dwell deep because it might be misleading if I say that. But we need to understand um, as long as our intention. Is actually trying to achieve, you know, kindness, beneficious, and benefiting other people, right? We might risk tainting our reputation, but as long as we get that goal of actually building a stable environment for a group of people, it can be companies, it can be countries, it can be a society, stuff like that. So I just read an example because Mr. Alpha mentioned about when he reflect his own doings and then he realized why am I you know not progressing in my merits not progressing in my kind deeds because I'm afraid of tainting myself or helping others right let me show you a sto- share your story there's a monk back in ancient China there's a monk crossing the rivers two monks one monk is um, on a boat the other monk was going to cross it but when when he looked at the riverside, there's a lady drowning. So as a monk, right, you're not supposed to touch women and all that. So what he did, he saved life. So he jumped in, he carried the woman, and then he even took off his clothes to keep her warm, right? He has no intention of uh, of whatever that nature is. He's, all he think about, unlike this one, is to save, is to save that person. He doesn't care about, oh, I'm a monk, I shouldn't be doing that. He just do it because it's the right thing to do. Right, he saved the lady, saved the person, so that he may survive. She may survive, and she did. And then it it goes, life goes on, right? That's the example. Doesn't matter how taint how tainted you are, as long as you get them to the safety. That's a real body server, right? So put it in a real life. You can't keep yourself clean while trying to keep everyone safe, right? We gotta get get our hands dirty. 
having said that, I'm not telling you to go and deal with drugs and go become a, a spy uh, for a, a cartel organization to, you know, you you don't have to do that, right? Just understand that maybe you might sacrifice a little bit of your what your perceived reputation to do something that is actually benefiting others. Say something more bold in order to benefit the organization, right? You might think in your head, people might think of you lowly because of your opinion. But in fact, you point to the issues straight ahead. So people are aware of it. They can't hide from it, right? Covering up is another evil deeds as well. Covering up something that should not be covered, that should be open, that should be helpful, right? Of course, able to access the situation accordingly, you know, knowing that, you know, these people are very powerful, they have control of this organization and stuff like that. They can't, so yeah, it's not easy. Let me show you another story. Uh, it might be a bit digress, but it's just, it, it just echoes with what Elfan says, you know, do not be afraid of tainting your hand as long as it actually helps them. Be careful, this is a very dangerous words because I might be another 500 years of fox if I say it wrong. So Mr. Elfan did say that, right, in the sense of um, I am afraid of, you know, like the monk, he just want to save people. Of course, don't 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 have to pursue that dangerous, risky venture without any reason, unless you're in the right position and you actually have that ambition. Um, so back to the point, there is this Ming Dynasty situation where, uh, you know, um, I'm talking about politics now. I know, but it's a history one. So this, you know, emperor of Ming Dynasty in the mid 1400s, 1500s. Um, it was literally a very messy situation where the cabinet was controlled by the prime minister and there's no sense of order. Everyone's covering each other's butts back, right? And they make, you know, they are, in the bottom line is people are starving while the wealthy and powerful one is accumulating thousands of acres of land and the yield they got from the land, the crops and harvest all goes into their own pockets. So it's dirty, dirty money. Bribery, corruption. By right, it should be, you know, a person who has aspiration to help the country with ambitions, right? They should go in there and, you know, keep yourself clean. Do not contact with these bad people, you know, those xiaoren, these um, corrupted people, stuff like that. But this person goes by the name Zhang Juzheng. Mr. Zhang Juzheng is a real person, right? Historical person. He went in there and he realized, right, he did that, you know, he trying to keep himself clean out of scandals, keep himself like, you know, upright, reputation is good, but all he can do is just a little, all he, all he can do is just submit a report to the emperor, which is the boss, and say that this is um, the situation in the country right now. People are starving, the wealthy are taking too much land for themselves. Look at our modern world, man. How is it any different? It's just change that to cooperation. So this is happening and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, like, what can we do, right? But the emperor was like, what can I do, man? This, I need to rely on him to control this situation, right? It, this is in balance. The power is in balance. So he went back because he feel like, what, what, what use am I? I signed up for this in order to help my country, in order to build, um, you know, to create a better uh, country for my people to live in. Of course, he's not 100% selfless. He also wants good salary and stuff, but he really wants to contribute properly, right? So he went back to his hometown and think about it. So he read someone in the history. That person is not like 100% good example, right? But um, his name is Han Xing. I think he's very famous. He's in Han Dynasty. He's the one that creates the empire that helps the um, Emperor Liu Bang to create the Han, we call ourselves Han Chinese because of him. So um, he's one of the general and he is like the, the end justified the means. Be careful of this word. I'm not trying to tell everyone end justified the means, go ahead. How big, how big is the end is? How serious is the situation, right? If that situation is already critical, right? It's already in the situation of no return, like everyone's already like, you know, back then the country after the unification of Qing, it gets separated. 
So the situation is messy. Everyone's against each other, right? Everyone's for themselves. So that kind of world is already messy. How do you make it uh, make it back to order? You gotta get your hands dirty, right? So he do what most people won't do is he went through a, 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 a jungle because he's escaping the 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 um, enemy's horse uh, cavalry regiment. So he went by through a dense thick forest because he lost a battle. He went by a dense forest. He asked a um, person uh, by the roadside, the um, wood locker, you know, logger, people who cut woods for a living. He asked him, where can I get out of here? So he said, uh, go here and here and here. Very friendly, nice man. So he went no more than you know, a few miles and he turned back, draw his sword and kill that person. Because he think like, while well, you can, while well, you can lead me out of here, you also might lead your enemy out of here. What he did is immoral. What he did is killing someone who helped him, and he will have come out of that. His ending is not really good, as well. But his goal is to become, is to help this space of people, which is back then the you know Qing people, you know. Um, to have a safer place to live. So in the end, he managed to survive. He managed to reach out to his king and then he built a Han dynasty with his help. He helped the king to build a Han dynasty by you know strong military and unifying everyone else. So his ending is not good. He got, he got stripped of his rank. He got forced to hang in the courtyard. I'm telling you a very like bloody story because that's history, right? and his human world, human society, right? Buddha does not shy away from this. He talks about that, you know, Arahan as well. But I'm not here to insinuate everyone to, you know, do that. I'm telling you in that desperate situation, what he did is wrong. That is wrong in a small scale, right? He has, he will have to, he owe his life to this um, wood logger that he killed because Woodlogger did nothing wrong. All he did is just pointing towards the right direction. However, at that situation, he killed him because to stop the enemy from able to finding him because this forest is very hard to navigate. And then he did that not because he hate the Woodlogger. He did that because he's trying to get to his king safely without getting captured or murdered by the um, enemy so that he can unite the whole country so that they can create order, which they did. So he's bad, but he also has merits. So this, you know, Confucius scholar, of course he's not doing that, right? He's, he's still studying Confucius book, right? Mr. Zhang, that was like, what? Thousand years later, right? Ming Dynasty, right? It's a huge gap, might Even though they have like similar system, it's a huge gap. Han Dynasty was like pre-1000 era. So what he learned from him is that in order to do achieve your goal, your ambition, we need to let go of you know that that little um, obsession of keeping yourself clean, right? I'm not telling you. Uh, remember, don't don't misunderstand. This is not telling you to go in and become you know that kind of person. You don't have to. You know, um, when you see what Buddha cultivate as well, like Bodhisattva, when you know there's a case where Bodhisattva went on a ship. And he has to, you know, save 500 people against one robbers. What did he do? Right? That robber is threatening to kill everyone and he's very serious about it. So if he's like, oh, no, it's, you know, I need to be kind. You know, I can't kill. Thou shall not kill, right? Buddha say no killing. So I shouldn't do this. But what happened? 500 people is going to die. At least 10 people before they... They, they, they sink because of chaos and stuff. So what he did is he immediately, you know, caught the robber unaware and killed him. Does it mean that the Bodhisattva does not have to suffer the bad karma of killing? He has to. She has to. That's the biggest, that's the touching part of it. He knows the consequences, yet he do it. Because the alternative is a lot of people going to die. All right? So, Mr. Zhang, what he did is he went back to the 
went back to the court because he was disappointed when he left Beijing. He's like, this is a hopeless country. All these people are corrupted and stuff like that. What he did is he went in there, find someone who is taking, you know, who is influential, who is taking charge of the situation, who is one of the corrupted officials, right? Remember, his tactic is inside, he does not change. His goal is trying to restore um, any semblance of normalcy to the people. That means releasing the land back to the people, not overly concentrated on this powerful government officials, right? Only like 10% controlling millions of people's livelihood. That's not right. So what he's trying to do is to do that. But in order to do that, he has to get his hand dirty. So he followed the teaching. I mean, he followed the, he went under um, the um, camp of a powerful politicians. And this politician has his hand in everything. Agriculture, mining and manufacturing, stuff like that. His Ming Dynasty is huge. There's so many things to do, so many ways to get money, right? So he learned from him. He act exactly like him, you know, he, you know, put on that face and act. And he even was promoted to be a teacher of one of the royal family member. That means he get to talk to the influential people. And then his goal is to climb all the way to the top, right under emperor, to become the Cheng Xiang, to become the prime minister. And he did. Everyone, when everyone thought he was Zhang Juzhen, remember his name, Mr. Zhang Juzhen. So what he did is he get all the way to the top and everyone thinking he's number two. He's just an, like another, another politician who is doing the same old, you know, thing, you know, using his connections and get all the money. So everyone thought rules of the game is the same. So this is the basic example of changing from within. So what he did is when he go all the way to the top of the, of the pinnacle of the power without overthrowing the emperor, what he did is immediately he implement two policies. He never forget. This is the hardest part. He never forget what he wants in the very beginning. First thing is he promote a sort of um, check and balance system where every government official needs to follow the, um, the um, kind of like anti-corruption uh, people to check against each other. Like basically what you receive from the salary and what your private property has should not. Basically tax office, okay? They want to see if you have uh, any unlawful gains, all right, that you reap from the people uh, unlawfully because you're supposed to, you know, get salary and of course your own private estate, that's fine, but no more than that. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is he immediately, um, something like, ask everyone to I mean because he's powerful now he literally has his finger in every corners of the empire but he's what is precious about him is he's not losing his compass he used that power to implement the land reclamation basically not reclamation he claimed the, he carved out the land that was being hoarded by the wealthy people because he's the most powerful person so what he says counts so he used these two systems to force the government officials to give up their lands. So to give them a grace period and say, those who were found guilty of, you know, holding land that is not supposed to, not rightfully theirs, either you'll be punished by, you know, reducing your rank or straight to the jail. And in there means torture and die, or maybe even worse, exile all the way. So, Everyone, of course, they have to survive. And no one can go against him because he's number one. So what he did is, you know, he literally be patient, act like one of the corrupt people, be like them, literally be like them. But when he reached to the top, he still remember what his mission. And he released everyone from that, um, from, from this situation. So it helps a little bit. You know, his country relieves that um, crisis a little bit. Of course, not for long, but at least it helps for, for a while. So what, what, what we have to say from this story, right? I know I digress a bit far, but always going back to Lao Fan, this can go very far, is when you decide to do something, um, you know, especially like Lao Fan, you want to change his life. He's willing to, you know, he has to let go of his past obsession. And kindness, you know, they're, they're, they're justice, right? 
what kind of justice can you can you achieve right what kind of kindness um, what kind of merit can you achieve if you want to achieve merits you need to actually change it's like getting out of your shell and then going into um, of a new person Jing Chan Toker it's like a cricket taking out of his shell and become someone else right a person who able to do that able to let go of the attachment to self the, in, the, the impression of self like I have to be like this um, they mold themselves into someone they need to be in order to do the job right that's basically what sages are they don't get stuck with all these um, small details they understand that you know this is right well, you know, this is not right, but it will be worse if I don't do that. So based on this situation, I need to do that, even though it's a bad thing. But I, what I'm, my intention, like uh, we call it, the path to hell are paved with good intention. Of course, it's very, very, um, very bad if I say it like that. It doesn't have to be like that, right? Um, yeah, I don't want to go too far. I think I'm really, really, really far. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I hope you scratch the itch of, um, you know, being kind, you know, being genuine, being, uh, you know, honest, you know, you, you, you borrow, you return. Yeah. And, and there is a different scale of kindness, different scale of, uh, deeds and if you stuck with the small one you will no longer get out of that shell right if you're trying to be there's a saying in Chinese Xiang Yuan everyone praise you everyone say you're number one you're very good but you know that's all you are right people who are actually able to change the course of the world are able to build up you know build up you know uh, uh, example that will emulated thousands of years later they go against the course of the world because the world is twisted twisted and they understand what they need to do you know they put themselves through this trial and ordeal not because they like it no one likes that um because um the reason why it exists is because to change the habits the certain bad habits of the world right buddha appear in india in in order to improve upon what's already there in India, they already have a lot of deep meditative ability and they improve on, on it. And Confucius went in this era where everyone no longer follows the rules of, you know, um, benevolent king. Everyone is trying to use power, use, you know, Machiavellian, use military to overpower one another. He born in the era. So what he promote is against these bad habits of strong eats the eat weak. He's trying to promote a path of moderation, basically trying to tell everyone, follow the good old Joe King. You know, he um, defeated his enemy, but he still treat them kindly, put them far away, but a good land where they can survive. Uh, they didn't, you know, be so cruel that cut off the roads. So he's not petty, he's not cruel. All right, he's, that's the that's example of person worthy to be a reader. All right. Wang, Wang Dao, something like that. So, yeah, even the worldly and the other worldly, they have these um, elements in it. So I need to um, wrap it up here. We'll continue this one next week. So hopefully in this one, we can learn about, um, first thing, the previous slide, we talk about don't, uh, 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 do not use the name of the sages to justify wrongdoing, right? And then we expand upon, you know, um, what should we do is to emulate them. Look at what they did. If we understand that, you know, if it touches us, do it. See how it goes, right? And then now here we talk about when you give, do not regret. When you borrow, always return. And then go deeper, you know, when you give, do you give out of your heart or give out for face to compare with other people to appear generous, right? Charity sometimes is used as laundry, money laundry, right? That's even worse, okay? This one is not that bad yet. It's talking about giving. You actually give, you're not laundering or anything, but you actually regret it. So that will reduce, discount your merits. And you borrow without returning, of course, you owe them. 
or you borrow and you return them in the worst condition for something that is non-perishable. Like those perishable like foods, like, you know, daily consumables, like toothpaste, stuff like that. You return them new stuff, new replacement, right? Be fair, right? And then I expand on the Alpha in four lessons because we talk about uh, changing destiny, talking about, you know, how do we, uh, uh, it's actually going to here. Uh, um, how do we change our life, improve our lives? So without further ado, I'd like to pause here a bit before I recap that um, Sunday session. I won't be doing a lot, uh, just half an hour. Uh, any questions so far?